what's up guys welcome back to my channel i'm tori david it's been a year since i graduated and a year and three months since i started working as a cloud developer so in that time i have learned so much and a lot of people have been asking me what do you actually do as a cloud developer so in this video i want to share what i do as a cloud developer the challenges i've encountered as a fresh graduate college subjects I wish I focused on more, and some of my just tips and reflections in this one year. So yeah, let's get into it! So, ano ba talaga ginagawa ko, di ba? What do I actually do as a cloud developer? Well, I get assigned to different projects, some internal, some client-facing, and I take on different roles. So sometimes I do front-end, sometimes back-end, and once in a while, I even volunteer for UI UX tasks because I want to improve in that area. But most of the time, I get assigned to backend, which I actually enjoy, you know, more than front end. Because for me, when I go backend, I feel more fulfilling when I finish it than front end. I feel so stupid when I do front end. Like for example, it's gonna take me like a couple of days para lang maayos yung side menu. O pagkatapos ko nun, parang na feel ko tapat isang day ko lang to natapos eh. Dapat alam ko na to. Now, since I work on different projects, I also work with different tech stacks. So one day, I might be using TypeScript even though I had zero experience with it. So, I have like one to two weeks to learn. Actually, minsan nga isang week lang or a couple of days. This is when I realized na, ah, ito pala yung sinasabi nilang you really have to adapt fast. You have to learn quickly and you have to stay curious. So honestly, no, most of the tech stack I use now sa work, I just learned them on the spot. So yung mga napag-aralan ko nung college, ako lang pa. So yung mga nagtatanong, no, was I able to use what I learned from my DevOps internship? Or nagamit ko ba yung mga naaral ko nung DevOps intern ako? Definitely, no? Kasi having knowledge of infrastructure, CI/CD pipelines, infrastructure as code, and containerization, is a huge advantage here sa cloud. I work with cloud native development, meaning I use AWS or other cloud service platforms or cloud service providers to actually build stuff. And let me tell you, no, no nga sa college ako, AI wasn't even a thing. No college ako, walang ChatGPT, walang Claude, walang Grok, walang anything. Siguro ang time lang namin nung grammarly pa lang mga paraphraser tool. And now I'm in the industry. AI is everywhere. No nagtisis ako. Wala kami ng AI nol. Ang weird lang sa feeling, kasi na witness ko yung transition from without AI tools to actually coding with AI. And yes, I do use AI, and no, it won't replace us. But I believe, no, I believe someone who knows how to use it will definitely replace someone who doesn't. And personally, the hardest part of being a cloud developer is yung bigla ang lipat talaga sa ibang tech stack na first time ko gagamitin. Tapos kilang ko agad makasabay sa sprint or sa timeline ng projects. Struggle is real talaga guys. Pero kaya naman, nakakaya ko naman na yun. So in my one year and three months of working, I also learned how important best practices are. Yung pag-optimize mo ng code, yung following software engineering principles like try, don't repeat yourself, kiss, keep it simple stupid, and OOP, yung object-oriented programming. Kasi, nung college ako, since maliliit lang naman, mga light applications lang, homeworks and projects yung kailangan natin gawin, ito masyado kinoconsider. Hindi ko talaga kinoconsider na dapat mabilis yung app ko, dapat malinis, dapat cost-efficient. So being in the industry, talaga palang tinitignan, no, kung dapat gano kabilis yung response time, or for example, gano kabilis yung API mo to deliver. And of course, in my work, it's the typical IT stuff also, uh, applying agile methodology, uh, Scrum framework, and then I attend daily stand-ups and meetings and answering emails and oh my god guys, the amount of corpus lang, no? The corporates lang, I have learned sobrang ano na sa utak ko, loop back, circle back, loop in. Ganun po ang isang cloud developer, nakakabaliw. No, I'm kidding. Now, let's move on to the challenges I have encountered as a fresh graduate. So first is... I expected things naman to be fast-paced, but it's a different level pala yung in the real world. Like, sobrang fast, okay? Like, deadlines come at you fast. And there's always something new to learn. Isa yung parang sa college night, they're gonna give you a few months to complete the whole system. Dito, usually two weeks. Two weeks ka lang to do everything. So, it's very fast. Like, speed talaga. Really, really, really fast. You know how siya sabi nila na maganda mag-work sa tech kasi we have work-life balance. Totoo naman, but right now, in my one year of experience, no, I'm still figuring out how to achieve that like completely. There are tasks talaga ako na 
I still do it after work hours. Personal choice ko na, na mag work after work hours or sa weekend. Kasi syempre nakakaya naman pag wala kang present. Pero I'm learning that burnout is real. So sometimes you need to set boundaries also. And you need to set na parang pag itong oras talagang rest time na. The next thing that I will mention is not actually a challenge for me. But you know, it might be to some. And gusto ko na aware na kayo agad na may ganto sa tech industry. Which is asking for help. So luckily, in my internship, talagang tinatak na sa akin ng mga mentor ko doon or ng mga ka-team ko doon na asking for help is okay. So I learned early on na communication is key and huwag mahihiyang magtanong as long as you ask the right questions. Maruto ka kung paano magtanong ng maayos and paano mag-communicate effectively. In line with this challenge is yung pag-erase ng issues as soon as possible. So if you already know you won't meet a deadline or nahihirapan ka, or may nakikita kang parang major bug na about to happen, you have to speak up early. Kasi kailangan malaman agad ng mga seniors nyo, ng mga project managers, ng mga dev team, na meron kayong major blocker or major issue na hindi nyo ma-figure out. Okay? So don't ghost your tasks. Be accountable and be honest. And again, raise issues as soon as as possible. Next is yung pag-adapt natin sa new technologies and learning on the spot. So, pala siya. Talagang nahihirapan ako mag-adjust na paano ko ba tututunan on the spot to? Anong mga kailangan kong gawin? Saan ako magsisimula? The key is to stay curious talaga and avoid becoming too AI dependent. Okay, here are tech concepts or subjects I wish I focused on more nung college pa ako or di ba magsisimula. So, looking back, there are many concepts that I wish I had learned earlier because I use them now regularly in my work. So, if you're still studying or starting out, these are worth paying attention to. Number one, di ako nakinig sa networking subject ko. Dapat pala nakinig ako. Yung mga IP addresses, subnet whatsoever. Very essential pala siya kahit hindi ka mag network engineer or something related to that field. Keep it or not, the next thing that I wish I focused on more in college is logic gates. Yung mga true, false, or, and, or. Una ko natutunan yung logic gates first year ako and I didn't pay much attention to it kasi parang, ah, madali lang yan, true, false lang yan, input, output, whatsoever. The next important thing is database. So, akala ko, since cloud naman ako or may pagka-UIUX or DevOps, hindi ko mahahawakan yung database. Pero yun nga, since na medyo back and heavy yung work ko ngayon or yung mga task ko, sobrang important pala na alam mo yung mga database queries. So, writing efficient queries kasi is crucial for performance kasi poorly optimized queries can slow down or crash applications. The next thing that I wish I focused on more or I wish na mas natunan ko pa is yung SAP Enterprise Systems. So, nagkaroon kami ng ganyan subject sa college. Sinunod ko lang yung manual. Hindi ko rin masyado tinutukan. Pero ngayon, nakikita ko sa job market na maraming job opportunities or may advantage pag alam mo yung SAP Enterprise Systems. Next is yung paggamit ng terminal or command line interface or yung paggamit mo ng CLI commands. Akala ko kasi yung mga ganun pang infrastructure lang. Akala ko for DevOps lang. Pero no, uh, ginagamit din pala siya kahit developer ka. Next is Java and JavaScript. So, nung job hunt ako, Parang lagi ko nakikita na Java language yung ginagamit. Dati kasi nung college, naartihan talaga ako sa Java. Parang ayaw ko sa kanya, ayaw ko siya gamitin. Kasi magka-print ka lang, may ano pa, system print, LN, whatsoever. So ayaw ko talaga ng Java. Widely used pala siya na language, yung Java and JavaScript. Next is, oh my god guys, please, 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 aralin nyo. OOP, Objective Oriented Programming. So knowing design patterns, writing maintainable code, and following OOP principles improves code quality and reusability. And of course, yung readability niya, yung pagbasa mo ng code. Grabe! Gamit na gamit yung OOP and actually medyo nakakahiya pag hindi mo alam yung mga iba't ibang OOP and paano mo siya gamitin. Next thing is please, ito pa talaga isa guys, please huwag na huwag kayong graduate na hindi alam ang Git and GitHub or any version control. Mapa-intern man ako, mapa-full-time job, mapa-part-time job, basta tungkol sa tech, ginagamit ang version control. I actually released a tutorial about it if you guys wanna watch. Pero again, please, as in, nagmamakaawa talaga ako sa inyo guys, very, very important na marunong kayong mag-git and GitHub or any version control. Next is yung unit testing and environments. Actually guys, before ako mag-graduate, hindi ko mag-gets, hindi ko alam yung purpose ng dev ng staging pati prod kasi nga yung mga projects ko dati nasa dev lang lahat. Writing tests and understanding different environments is very critical to avoiding production issues. So, ngayon pa lang, pag di nyo alam kung ano yung difference ng dev sa staging at sa prod and anong purpose nila, isearch nyo. So, actually, apat na yun, no? OOP, 
version control na Git and GitHub, unit testing, and yung different environments na dev staging and prod. Tutunan nyo na ko ano yan kasi very helpful siya. And again, lahi ko siya nakakita sa any work I do in the tech industry. Next, very underrated skill but it's actually debugging. Now na nauso na yung term na vibe coding or now that we're becoming too AI dependent or minsan yung AI na yung gumagawa ng boilerplate or template to start with, Debugging is very, very important. And meantime, may mga work days ka or may mga times na nasa work ako na I do like 20% coding, 80% debugging. Next is Scrum, Agile, Sprints, all that kind of terms. Kung ngayon, nagtitisis pa lang kayo, i-practice nyo na. You know, the whole concept of Sprint and Agile and Scrum or even Kanban, i-practice nyo na. Para familiar na kayo once you're in the tech industry is ito medyo nakakahiya na ngayon ko lang natutunan na nag-work na ako is yung paggamit ng Postman and kung ano-ano yung different na HTTP API method. So, working with APIs requires a solid grasp of HTTP methods like yung get, yung post, put, and delete. Pati yung pagbuo ng crude functionalities, yung create, retrieve, update, delete, and yung paggamit ng Postman. So, nung intern ako, pati right now sa work, gamit na gamit ko yung Postman. So, yung mga concepts or programming languages na dapat alam nyo, it actually varies no, on what role or what job you want in the tech industry. So, yung mga sinabi kong networking, Postman, or mga API methods, ito kasi yung gamit na gamit ko ngayon sa pagiging cloud developer na hindi ko masyado natutukan nung college ako. So, ang point ko here is, for example, if you want to specialize in another field, for example, data engineering, mas okay na ngayon pa lang matutunan mo na yung ETL, yung data normalization, data warehousing, and distributed computing. So, next, let's move on to the segment na never nawawala when I do videos like this, yung nakaupo lang, which is yung tips ko lang and reflection. First is, comparison is the thief of joy. In my one year of working, no, I already feel like I'm falling behind. Sabi ko lagi nakikita na parang, oh wow, buti pa siya, nandun na sa company na yun. Oh wow, buti pa siya, ganyan na yung role. Or wow, ang dami yung achievement, one year pa lang. Pero ngayon, nire-remind ko sarili ko na I have to focus on my own pace. I have to focus or work on my own progress. And ang goal or focus ko now is paano ko ba ma-reach yung full potential ko sa work na ginagawa ko yun sa company na I'm working at. Every day won't be your best day. So my best looks different every day. Some days I'll be 100% productive talaga ang time ko nagagawin na day. And some days naman, kahit anong pilitin ko, hindi talaga kaya. Ayaw talaga ng brain ko gumana. But that doesn't mean that you're failing. Next tip that I wanna give you guys is to read the documentation first before using AI tools. Most of the time talaga, yung solutions nyo nasa documentation na ng software or ng tool or ng programming language. So, learn to read and understand docs before relying on AI-generated solutions. Madalas, mali ang binibigay ng AI or hindi siya yung pinaka-optimized the way or minsan meron siyang hallucinations na kung ano-ano binibigay niya answer na masaya yung oras mo. Next thing is, sometimes the best thing to do is step back. Rest is very, very important. So, if you're stuck, Hands up muna, lakad muna kayo, itulog nyo muna, and come back with a fresh mind. Another reflection is, nung college kasi ako, in my videos, I always say na I'm passionate about technology, passion ko yung tech, yung cloud, whatsoever, and very excited ako mag-work kasi sabi nga nila, if you're doing what you love, it doesn't feel like work. Dati excited ako kasi parang, uy, passion ko naman yung tech eh, for sure. Yung work ko ngayon, it won't feel like work, parang chill lang, ganyan. May time talaga na kahit passionate ka sa isang bagay, may hirap siya gawin. And your job doesn't have to be something you're passionate about. Kasi for example, may nagtanong sa akin, at the darla lang sa tech ako, I'm passionate about this, but I'm doing something different. Talo na ba ako? Of course not. Hindi ka talo porque your job is not something you're passionate about. Or hindi ka talo kasi your job is not something you like. Ang natutunan ko na, work should fuel your passions, di ba? It, it doesn't have to be the same, it doesn't have to work hand in hand, and even though there are times that I don't like what I'm doing, that it feels like work and I hate it, I'm thankful pa rin na because of my work, because of what I'm doing right now, I can finally do other things that I'm passionate about. So for example, dati gusto ko mag-hike, ngayon nakapag-hike na ako, you know, attend concerts that I really like. I realize ko na passion can be many things. I realize ko na Di ako passionate sa technology. It's just that I'm passionate about the things that bring me joy, and technology brings me joy. Another reflection or tip na maibibigay ko sa inyo in my one year of working is, natutunan ko na there will always be a solution. In tech, there's always a plan A to Z. 
It's just a matter of finding the right one. And how do you find the right solution? Number one is to take a break. Again, number two, ask for help. Maling mo yung ibang co-worker na pagdaanan na yung problem na yan. Number three is to join networking events, communities. Kasi dun sa mga events na yun, malalaman mo yung perspective ng ibang tao. And alright, that's it for today's video. I hope this gave you a better idea of what it's like working as a cloud developer or ano ba itsuro ng tech industry in my first year of experience. You know, the challenges, the things I wish I knew earlier, and some tips if you're just starting out. If you found this video helpful, of course, don't forget to like and subscribe and drop a comment if you have any questions or if you relate to any of the struggles I mentioned. I'd love to hear about your experiences too. So if you guys have any advice, then for us, the young professionals or starting pa lang, drop it below in the comment. And I'd also appreciate if you share this video sa mga friends nyo or sa mga co-workers nyo or to anyone actually. And yeah, thank you so much. Please expect more from me. Stay tuned. And dami kong videos coming up for you guys. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye everyone. Bye.